Welcome again. Right now we are at Luke chapter 23, verses 26 to 43. Jesus is crucified. Let's read it, verse 26. When they led him away, they grabbed one, Simon of Cyrene, coming from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it after Jesus. A great multitude of people followed him, including women who also mourned and lamented him. What a lot of people don't realize is that Jesus was tormented very much so. He was torn apart. They whipped him. They beat him. He was a bloody mess. You know, in the book of Isaiah, it describes him as someone who is, was so torn apart, you can barely recognize it, who it was, okay? So he didn't even have the strength to carry his own cross. He was bleeding so badly. His strength was, was uh, drained out of him so, so much. They had to get Simon to, uh, to carry the cross. And uh, seeing this sight of this man who was just torn apart, bloody mess, just like a piece of raw meat. Uh, we got, it says here, the, a lot of women were mourning and lamenting him. People followed him. It was quite a scene, okay? Quite a scene of torture. Quite a scene of just brutality. Let's read on. Verse 28. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me. <laughs> wow. Jesus is not out for a pity party. Jesus was a strong man. He wasn't this weakling little sissy. He wasn't some little pansy boy. He was a very strong man. Don't weep for me. Don't pamper me. He didn't take this pampering and what a lot of these sissies and pansies do today. He didn't take this pampering. He didn't take these, this pity. In the, in, the, in the state that he was in, which I, I tell you, I'm almost positive, that 100% positive that every one of you within the sound of my voice have never experienced anything even close to this. His, his skin was ripped off his body in many places. It says in the book of Isaiah that his beard was torn off his face. He was a bloody mess. He was just a bloody mess totally massacred okay you picture this this is worse than what you see in you know some of the movies a lot worse and these people following him mourning and weeping so sad look what's going on with jesus and jesus turned to them and said daughters of jerusalem don't weep for me i'm not here for a pity party i know i'm pretty much i'm half dead right now don't pamper me. Let's read on. He said, daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they will say, blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nurse. Then they will begin to tell the mountains, fall on us and tell the hills, cover us. And this is found in Hosea verse, uh, chapter 10, verse 8. For if they do these things in the green tree, what will be done in the dry? In other words, I'm not here for a pity party. Don't worry about me. I know my face is torn off of me, but don't worry about me. I know my back is torn up like a like it says in the scriptures, torn like a like a field that's plowed, but don't worry about me. Don't weep for me. Don't pamper me. Weep for yourselves and weep for your children because of what, because of the sin that they are in and the, and the things that are coming upon them because of their rejection of their Messiah. Verse 32, there were also others, two criminals, led with him to be put to death. When they came to the place that is called the skull or Golgotha, they crucified him there with the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Dividing his garments among them, they cast lots. You know, there are people today, in particular, there's this one church right now, and at the time of this, uh, this teaching, uh, at the time of this recording, there's a church in Germany that uh, claims to have historical evidence that they have the actual robe that Jesus had, uh, that he was wearing, uh, uh, the seamless robe. 
the robe in question that people wanted when they cast lots. So we have ancient relics today. At least we have people who claim to have these ancient relics. Are they really the real deal? You know, the genuine, the genuine relics that they're supposed to be? Possibly. That's just a very interesting thing to note. That yes, there are. You know, we do have uh, uh, people today who claim to have these ancient relics, such as the seamless robe of Jesus. The people stood watching. The rulers with them also scoffed at him, saying, "He saved others; let him save himself." If this is the Christ of God, the Mashiach, the Messiah, his chosen one. Verse 36, the soldiers also mocked him. I want you to note that because I'm going to get back to that later. The soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save save yourself. So why did they offer him vinegar? Well, we read in the other gospels that he was thirsty. He said, I thirst. So they were just putting him through as much torment as ever. Like, oh, you're thirsty, are you? Here, drink this vinegar. And who knows how strong that vinegar was. Maybe it was super strong. Maybe it was like cleaning vinegar today, okay? Maybe it wasn't like the food-grade vinegar we have and probably wasn't. It was probably very, very strong and, and very pungent. So they offered him vinegar to drink to quench his thirst. How kind they were. Verse 38. An inscription was also written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged insulted him, saying, If you are the Christ, if you are the Messiah, save yourself and us. But the other answered and rebuking him said, Don't you even fear God, seeing that you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. He said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This here needs to be addressed, okay? Because this is something that a lot of people bring up. Obviously, this thief or this criminal was saved. Uh, Jesus pronounced salvation on him by saying that he will be with him in paradise. The other one was not. So the other one was mocking Jesus. If you're the Christ, save yourself and us. If you're, if you're the Messiah, if you're really the Messiah, save yourself and us. But the other criminal, well, let's, let's go back to this again. Let's go back to the scripture again because this is significant to really understand what this is all about. So this other criminal said to Jesus, okay, this is verse 40. The other answered and rebuking him, okay, rebuking the other criminal, said, don't you even fear God, seeing that you are under the same condemnation. In other words, listen, you're a hypocrite. You're, you're under the same condemnation as Jesus and you, and you are attacking Jesus? You're a hypocrite. Don't you even fear God? This is it. When you are not saved, you don't fear God. When you don't fear God, you're not saved. It doesn't matter how many times you recite the sinner's prayer. It doesn't matter how many times you recite the, the scriptures, you know, the John 3, 16, you know, Psalm 91, yada, yada, yada. It doesn't, how many, it doesn't matter how many times you kneel beside your bed at night and pray. In fact, it says that God does, a lot of times God doesn't even hear the prayers of the sinners. It doesn't matter how many times you go to, go to church. It doesn't matter how many times you read your Bible. If you do not fear God, don't expect to be saved. Don't expect that you can claim salvation. This criminal said to the other one, don't you even fear God? Now, I don't know for sure. Nobody knows for sure here. But I suspect that the criminal who, that was the right criminal was the one who was on the right side of Jesus. Because they said one was on the left side, one was on the right side. Now, traditionally speaking, you know, in the Jewish mind, and there are reasons for this. I'm not going get to in, get into this in this teaching right now. But, you know, in, in the Jewish mind, uh, the left side is the side of Satan, 
The left side is the side of the accuser. And the right side is the side of God, the side of the, the right side, you know. The left side is the side of evil. The right side is the side of good. Now, again, this is just speculation, but I would think that the criminal who was not saved, who was mocking Jesus, was on his left side. And the criminal who was, was saved, who was on the right side of Jesus, in more ways than one, was probably on his right side. Just a little speculation from me. But here we have one criminal who feared God and one who didn't. What happened to that one who feared God? Of course, if he feared God before, he wouldn't be doing the crime you know, that he was crucified for. So perhaps between the, between the time he committed the crime to the time when he said this, then there must have been some repentance there. There had to have been repentance. This is pure evidence. This is fruit of repentance. He's talking about fearing God. He's talking about, you know, not being a hypocrite. Verse 41, he said, And we indeed justly, we have received this condemnation justly. There, you know, we deserve what we got, is what he said. For we receive the due reward for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And then he turned to Jesus and said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So here we've got evidence and fruit of repentance. First of all, he's talking about fearing God. Second of all, he's coming against hypocrisy. Thirdly, he's talking about being humble and admitting that he got what he deserved. He's admitting his sin and accepting the punishment. How many people today don't admit their sin and, and let alone accept the punishment because they're just there's too much pride in them, too much arrogance in them. But this man admitted his sin, accepted the punishment, and proclaimed Jesus to be innocent. Are you going through lots of things in your life? Don't blame God. Don't say, oh, it's God's fault when it could be your fault. Admit your sin, accept the punishment, and proclaim God to be righteous in all that he does. Admit your sin, accept the punishment, and proclaim God to be good in it all, through it all. Okay? This is pure evidence of repentance. And this is why Jesus said, Today you will be with me in paradise. Not just because he acknowledged Jesus. I know some people, this is such a shallow theology they have. Well, this man accepted Jesus, so he got, you know, do you know how many pimps? Do you know how many drug pushers? Do you know how many murderers? Do you know how many real criminals accept Jesus? Almost everybody. I know of a, a, a friend of mine who said he was in jail once, and, and a preacher came to jail and asked him, asked everybody in jail, how many of you are going to heaven when you die? And pretty much, almost everybody put their hands up. Why would everybody in jail? Who knows what they're in for? Rape, murder, theft, whatever. But they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to heaven when I die. Why? Because they've been fed this junk. They've been fed this trash that all you got to do is accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's not by works. You can do whatever you want and still get saved. That's not what the scripture says. Why did Jesus die? Jesus died so that you could look on him and say, I am crucified with him. My lusts, my desires, my selfishness died with Jesus. And when he rose from the dead, I, ro I rose with him. That's being born again. When the Spirit of God comes in you and makes you a new person, just as the Spirit of God came into Jesus, that dead body of Jesus, and made him a new person. So new, by the way, that... A lot of people didn't even recognize him. We'll get to that as well. But this thief on the cross was saved because of his repentance, because of his humility, his fearing God, accepting, his, accepting the fact that he sinned and accept, accepted the uh, punishment and proclaimed God to be good through it all. That's why he was saved. As you go your way, may God bless you, 
give you revelation, give you insight into the death of Jesus like you've never had before. And by the way, may God show you the death of Jesus, the crucifixion of Jesus throughout the Old Testament because it's there, the so-called Old Testament. And we're going to get to that. As we go through the scriptures, we're going to get to that. So do not miss these teachings. Always check back. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to make sure that you're notified when a new video is posted because uh, we're going to get through this. Word for word, we are going through the, the scriptures because they are vital for our eternal salvation and for our eternal welfare, okay? They are vital. Jesus Said to said to the Satan so many times, you know, it is written. That's how he. That's how he, you know, counteracted the evil one. It is written. It is written. It is written. And then throughout his his uh, his ministry, Jesus rebuked people for not knowing what is written. Like, have you not read? Have you not read? So we are going to read it together. Join me as we read it together. And may God bless you and give you great revelation as you do. In the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Thank you.